If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you probably remember this guy. This is the Grindex Satellite 3400. I did a huge, huge restoration series on this guy. I can't remember how many videos it was. But this is my pride and joy. This one I use a lot. And if you are a real regular viewer of my channel, you might remember that guy. This is the Satellite 2100, which also took up quite a bit of space on my channel. And I really love this radio. I haven't got the decals yet, but I've got so used to using it without it that um, it sort of fell by the wayside. And also, I've got to admit, the 3400 has sort of taken, well, taken over some of this one's jobs. Now, obviously, you can't stop there, can you? Because the Satellite series has quite a few iconic radios in it. And without question, This is the other one. This is the Grundig Satellite 6001. I believe it's also called the 210. And this is the next subject that's going to be tackled here. This radio was offered to me by a uh, subscriber. He uh, sent it to me and uh, he said to me that he'd had a bit of, I believe he had some fireworks when he tried to switch it on and decided that it was just a little bit too much for him. He wanted me to go through the pain of uh, restoring it. So that's what I'll be doing next. And I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how successful it's going to be. So it should be fun. And uh, if this sort of thing interests you, stick around. It should be a challenge. After my rather weak attempt at a dramatic introduction, I think it's time to get started on this. This uh, radio was a gift from a viewer from Holland. His name is Rob Krom. And Rob, I want to thank you for the gift. I really appreciate it. And um, you said that this was a little bit too much for you. <laughs> it might be a bit too much for me. Who knows? Time will tell. But it's always a pleasure to try and restore these radios. This for me is the third one in a series that I consider to be iconic. I'm sure a lot of you share that uh, sentiment. These radios were and are still incredible uh, world receivers. So I'm going to do my best. And before we get started, I want to give you a closer look at what we're facing. Close up, it's scarier than from a distance, which makes it more fun. Let's get into it. These radios are really fantastic. They've got a lot of bands. Usually you can go from the long wave all the way through to the top of the short wave, which is up near 30 megahertz. I believe this is a similar case. So first thing we look at is the cabinet. It's in pretty bad shape. Lots of dings on the chrome. It's got a sliding lid at the back here, which is, I opened it up to check, but it's sort of stuck. But that sort of slides across here. A couple of screws missing, different screws on here that don't belong. But that's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. Uh, what may be a problem that I've just noticed, and we'll get a closer look, is that this drum is completely messed up. A lot of scratches on the grill there, some paint dabs on here. Actually, this isn't torn. This um, faux leather is not torn. There are some dings on there. Yeah, this thing's not going to look new when it finishes, when we finish with it. But usually that's not what I'm trying to do. We'll see what we can do to this. Let's have a look at what this thing offers. It's got the usual, the on-off. That's the dial light, if you want to switch it on. There's long wave, medium wave, or AM. Short wave 1, short wave... Yeah, this is short wave 1, and this is short wave 2 to 9. And as we'll, we will see, that 2 to 9 is on the drum tuner. Uh, FM, and this is for external antenna. These are stuck. That one's fine, but the antenna one is... Oh, it's come out now. It's supposed to jump up. We've got uh, volume, bass, treble, and this is an antenna tuner. You sort of tune the antenna for the greatest noise, and you know that you've tuned the antenna. Band spread, shortwave band spread, but I don't know what that activates. We'll find out as well. So nothing too special on there. Our antenna has definitely seen better days. Somebody tried to solder it or weld it on there, so that's a bit messed up. 
on the side here we'd have the selector for shortwave 2 to 9 and that is completely loose. This I think is the tuner, not the selector, but that's completely loose. I think I think there's no dial cord on there. And this is the drum. Oh dear, that's stuck. That's getting stuck. There's something stopping it rotating, so I won't force it. You've got your long wave dial, short wave one, medium wave, and FM. These little things are station markers that you can move up and down, on and off. This is loose. This is the uh, battery indicator and also the AFC. Is that AFC or is that... No, that's... Um, that'll be tuning level, I think. AM battery. Battery, AM... Short, oh, this is narrowband AM and wideband AM. Okay. This is the band spread. Yeah, this is band spread tuning for the shortwave 1 to 10. Or is it to 9? I keep forgetting. To 9. This is your FM tuning. Okay. So we've got some problems in here. This thing is not turning. And I don't want to force it. Yeah, it's really messed up. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is remove this thing from the cabinet. Let's look at the back first. The back here we've got... Uh, this is a car antenna. This is an SSB connector. I think you can put an SSB, a BFO on here. These are FM antenna dipole, external antenna, external speaker. This will probably be your um, PA input and this is probably DC voltage in. This will be a... Oh, stuck. There's a switch here that normally lets you select between external power or battery. There is the option of putting a battery on here. And I opened that up and found this. So somebody had already put a, or soldered, some wire to the battery clips. I suppose that would be the easiest way to power this thing up. But you have to power it up with battery voltage. <laughs> Not mains, <laughs> which is very tempting with this thing. So we'll have a quick way of uh, getting power in if we need to but I need to take this thing out I need to take this out I'm very keen to find out what we are going to face inside I think this back cover comes off because I I see some hinges I think it sort of opens out but let me get it open yeah this thing has got two screws on here and it hinges out like this and what do we see here we've got a battery connector Ah. Uh, there's the dial cord for the AM. That's why this thing was not giving us anything. I don't like stringing dial cords, but we'll have to do it. This will be the FM one, I think. Yeah. This one is turning here. Just trying to see. This thing's turning over here, but it's not turning that which is strange. It should be the FM, and I thought the FM was tuning. It is. It's moving the pointer up and down, but it doesn't seem to be turning that at all. Okay. It's very stuck. And this guy is... This is not stuck. It just doesn't have any cord on there. So... <laughs> I'm glad I've got a service manual that tells us um, how to wire this thing up together. It actually shows you how to string this. So it should be doable. Except some of it is broken, so we'll have to get a different dial cord. And otherwise, yeah, it's not bad. It, it doesn't look too bad inside. This uh, antenna is a little bit messed up. But otherwise, it doesn't look too bad. I'm just looking at, this would be a heatsink. I think the output stage would be there. All the switching is on this board. These are working. And that one is stuck, but that's normally not a problem. So, first things first, I think we just take it out of the cabinet. I think you take this off. There's two screws over here. There and there, that comes off. And then usually it's like four screws and the whole thing just comes back. 
comes out the back. So let me get that done. Well, that wasn't too hard. I thought it would be worse. The first thing I did was remove the antenna, which uh, the debris is lying over there. Took a bit of uh, twisting because that top knob made it thicker than it should be. The antenna came out. There are two screws to remove on the bracket on the side. I had to desolder the battery connectors, the battery uh, wires from those three points. And then I desoldered the speaker and that was it. And this is what we've got on this side. And of course there were two screws, one on the left, one on the bottom, but you sort of see that it's quite self-explanatory. And then the top doesn't come off because there's obviously circuitry on there for the controls, the tone controls, antenna tuner. So that seems to stay on there. And I can see that that drum tuner thing the uh, dial pointer was lying in the bottom of the radio on the front, so there's something wrong there. It's got a lot of dirt on here, but nothing too scary, I don't think. I'm actually not looking forward to restringing that thing. Quite frankly, that's one of the crappiest jobs to do on these things. Let's have a look inside there. That circuit board could be a problem to get to but we'll worry about that when we get to it it's probably the what is that the IF board I'm gonna to have to do quite a bit of studying on this I think there'll be some capacitors and so on to change on here because that's audio let's turn this a bit more and see what we've got on the side here that what is that? Those are filter capacitors, I think. I'm trying to see through the camera here. That'll be the output, those two output transistors on there. The back is acting as a heat sink. So this is a dual purpose board. It'll be audio and something else, probably IF. Remember we've got um, We've got uh, FM and the shortwave, AM, and I think I've got to study the schematic and the instructions a bit more. But I've got to check what the IF situation is here. The other one had a dual conversion, so I'm not sure if this one has as well. I really have not had time to do a thorough study of it. But yeah, that's what we're facing. The drum tuner is the one that normally needs a lot of cleaning of every contact, but that's not difficult. The mechanics of getting this tuner to, to roll is different to the previous ones. Those were just sort of on the axis, made a lot more sense. I'm not sure how this one's done because you've got to roll the tuner to change the uh, shortwave band. You do that with that... Uh, control the lever on the left there, but then it turns something which is perpendicular to it, and it's also got to turn the dial thing, the dial corresponding dial at the front that we can just see through here. So there's a lot of um, dial string or probably wire that um, controls this, but figure that out when we get to it. I'm not going to power this up just yet because <laughs> I was warned what I'm going to do first is I'm going to analyze the power situation. I know we've got uh, the battery clip hanging around here. I'm not sure whether that's added on later or whether it came with it. We've got the battery holder at the bottom. We've got those two wires soldered on there. I don't know what's been tested on that. There's a DC socket somewhere here as well. So I need to make sure this thing is getting power and that the power is being properly regulated. So first things first, power supply. And of course, studying this whole thing a little bit uh, more carefully, because as you've probably figured out by now, I don't know that much about it. It is quite different to the other two. It's older and uh, probably a little bit more simplified. The top section, for example, on the others comes out. The, the, other, the others are a lot cleaner to 
to remove from the chassis. You get it all out and this one doesn't work that way. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of study on this. I'm just going to stop the video for now. I'll be back very, very soon because I am quite excited about getting started on this thing. And um, I'll get back to you when I've got some more to report. So once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you do, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.